Miss Frizzle. She's the teacher in the magic school bus. We've had it as a part of our childhood for years. But what if I told you that the magic school bus isn't the happy dappy fun show that it is shown to be? And I have proof. Do not get on that bus. So to start off, why do I think this? Well, she's shown literally nearly killing children in some episodes. Like there's this one where a kid takes his helmet off in space and won't put it back on. And Miss Frizzle barely does anything to prevent something bad from happening. Whoa whoa whoa. Isn't a teacher's job to keep the children safe and supervised until the end of the school day? Miss Frizzle definitely doesn't seem to be doing that. And if you look throughout the episodes, you can see that she really isn't that helpful when it comes to bad things happening. And if you look closely, something about her personality just seems slightly suspicious. But oh boy have we only just begun. Because I've decided to watch several Magic School Bus episodes. A whole lot of them. And in all of them, there always seems to be something suspicious happening. In the Frizz Connection, she doesn't change the bus to an appropriate form during a storm. We also see that in the Magic School Bus rides again that whenever the Magic School is powered by the sun, instead of waiting for the sun to come out, she just goes directly up to the sun, and puts everyone's life in danger from there. This is proof that there is no shortage of both of the frizzes putting people into danger. Like even in the clear cash grab movie The Frizz Connection, she split into several versions of herself and split the kids apart into different dangerous situations with frizzes that are clearly just emotions, and are not bright. Ms. Frizzle was recently trending in politics too on Twitter. Like, not to get too political or anything but, Ms. Frizzle. But basically people started discussing how they don't like the new design of her. And the children too. I love this one where there's a lot to consider here. And by the end of this video, you'll never look at Ms. Frizzle in the same way ever again. Because, guys, Ms. Frizzle is a murderer. Not just any murderer, but a death eater. And I'm gonna prove it to you. First, I'm gonna have to prove to you that she's some kind of killer. <laughs> to start off, we're gonna look at this very thought-provoking episode. It basically starts off with Ms. Frizzle casually taking the kids to the zoo. You know, pretty normal field trip. But no Ms. Frizzle has to ruin everything and make it weird. So she makes the bus spin and you always know something bad is gonna happen. And you know, mark my words. She turns kids into wild animals and forces them to survive in the city on their own. A perfect concept for furries to go crazy with. And what do you know? I'm getting my footage from a video literally called Furry Field Trip Part 1. You've done dirty here magic school bus. I only know furries existed back then because of the obscure research I had to do for Arnold Haggy's time machine. There's a decent chance anybody even knew what a furry was after 1989. So unless Ms. Frizzle is a furry, I don't I just don't understand. Now, that was obviously a joke. But then we see these kids having to painfully chase down a frickin' bear bus because the frizz is insane. Like, if they never found that bear bus, they would have just been stuck as opossums, foxes, birds. 
etc. But a couple notable really dumb things I found in this episode. Arnold smells bugs and says they smell so good. Keep in mind. Crazy Miss Frizzle made him into a fox. So that really makes me think. Do foxes really like bugs that much? Like. Foxes aren't even necessarily known for liking bugs. A quick Google search will prove to you that the magic school bus isn't being factual. Foxes mostly go for more meaty things, and you probably won't just see a fox eating bugs casually. So another thing Ms. Frizzle did is mess up the freaking brains. No one can do that unless it's some sort of freaking spell or something. I give that as one piece of proof that Ms. Frizzle is a wizard slash death eater. Another thing I found sus is that whenever the bird people fly, you start to think, wait, didn't they just become birds? They probably shouldn't immediately know how to fly. So unless Ms. Frizzle is casting some sort of spell again or something, the magic school bus certainly got this wrong. Like we all know that birds literally go through nearly life-ending beginnings on their first try of flying. So I don't know what's necessarily going on here. But what's the proof of her being a murderer? Well, see, Morn. This all started by the kids wondering why these animals at the zoo were by a frickin' city and could survive in a city. If Ms. Frizzle really cared about their well-being and safety, she would have never even thought about doing this. And this would have never even happened. And what especially bothers me is that Dorothy Ann has ears. Like, that's so unnecessary. But for real though, this might have just been one of the Frizz's evil plans to try and kill them one day. Like there's nothing normal about a magic school bus. You can also see them nearly suffocating. Sliding through someone's throat. Getting pushed through a cloaker. Nearly getting digested. Getting turned into fossils. And much much more. All of these things clearly point to not being safe in any shape or form. But what's the theory here? I think that if you look through each scenario, they go in a specific order that you cannot overlook. So the theory here really is that she keeps making closer and closer calls to their death to point where they get so used to it that whenever it finally happens, they'll be so used to it to the point where they'll trust her enough that they'll expect to be okay. When in reality, they're gonna see her for the final time. And it's all the Frizz's fault. Now, that pretty much sums up my theory for the fact that she's a murderer. But ooh, I'm not done yet. Because guys, she's a witch. Once you hear this sentence, you can't stop looking at all the details pointing towards the idea that she is in fact a witch. There's even this Tumblr post right here that has some pretty solid evidence that she is likely a witch or some kind of magical being. The proof is that the magic school bus can time travel. Ms. Frizzle claims that she knows everything. And she always knows what the students are up to. As if she's experienced this all before. You know. Reliving the moments. Or just generally having the power to know all. Her past also remains very anonymous. She also seems like the exact kind of person that would go back in time to teach herself. Nobody is named Valerie Frizzle at birth. Not the Valerie part. But the Frizzle. That's an abnormal last name. Of course there are a bunch of out of the ordinary last names. But Frizzle just sounds like some sort of magical witch alias. She dresses quite queerly and laughs at her own bad jokes. A lot of the show is about Arnold trying to take chances. 
and Ms. Frizzle looks like a grown woman version of Arnold. You know, to give him the hint that he's targeted to be gone first or something. I never said she was a good wizard. She could be a bad wizard. She could be a freaking death eater. We need to find all of her horcruxes to defeat her. The last one could be the magic school bus itself. I'm just kidding. I was just trying to kind of hint at this. But she is definitely some kind of magical being. This can also be shown as she kind of predicts what will happen that day on her dress. Haven't you ever found it suspicious that the kids are in the exact same class? These kids are supposed to be 5th to 6th graders. They are definitely needing to have some sort of different teacher here. But yet, we see the kids looking for Ms. Frizzle at the beginning of the magic school bus rides again. At the beginning of the next year. So I think she's holding them hostage. And the rest of the school seems to be clueless about this. You can also find that the show is supposed to take place in the Chicago suburbs. Punching in the crime rate of a popular Chicago suburb you can see that it's actually pretty high. So she could totally be some sort of secret magical fugitive wanting to kidnap children. Because she's crazy and if she has this magic and can summon a magic school bus. This can be a dream for a child killer. Even if you don't think this is true. You have to admit. It can't just be a normal show about kids going on adventures in a magic school bus. Something is going on here. And it's not good. So I've basically just made you have a whole new look on the frizz and ruined your childhood. We need to stop cancelling others. And start thinking about doing that to Ms. Frizzle. So I was gonna make another Ms. Frizzle is a murderer to find more evidence. But it was then that I saw that the magic school bus was only available until the 18th of May. And now. I had already collected some evidence a month prior. So I'm just gonna work with that. But now, this an incomplete calculation of how many years Miss Frizzle gets in jail. Because, if you saw part 1, you'd already know this lady isn't a very good person. Well, she's a terrible person. In fact, she's a murderer. And now, if you're too lazy to watch the other video, I will briefly explain the theory. Basically, have you ever seen Ms. Frizzle as a little bit of a sus person? Like, she barely supervises the kids. So I basically scanned over some magic school bus episodes and concluded that she's leading up to closer and closer calls to the children's death. To the point where they'll trust her whenever their death day does in fact come. So now that we're basically all caught up, I'm just gonna jump right into the explaining and calculations. Now, in order to truly find out how many years Ms. Frizzle actually gets in jail, we'd have to pay close attention to every episode of the Magic School Bus ever. And I don't know about you, but I don't think want to binge watch an entire children's series. Because I mean, I'm not freaking mad pat and the stupid education system isn't gonna let that happen so. I guess we're gonna have to get an idea of how many years she gets behind bars. And I bet the answer will still be shocking. Now, starting off, there was an episode where Ms. Frizzle transformed everyone into salmon eggs. And they quickly became warped salmon. Like, what is this? This looks like some sort of deformed, long water bug with no legs. Like some sort of fish sausage. 
but I think you need to realize that it's extremely dangerous for people, especially children to transform into eggs, and then salmon in such a short period of time. So I'm officially saying that Ms. Frizzle simply broke the law of child abuse. So add that to the list, because I bet we're gonna be seeing a lot of that. In earns the children into clouds. Now there isn't a law against unwillingly turning someone into a cloud, but it's with children. So I guess that's adding another case of child abuse. In another episode, Ms. Frizzle is taken to a fake court for turning someone's cucumber into a pickle, or stealing it or whatever. They think she purely made the cucumber disappear, even though clearly just pickled it. So that's showing that they don't know how a pickle is even made. That's purely a case of not educating a child, let alone a whole frickin' school. I don't know what law that goes under, but we will see. In another episode they get trapped in a jar after they get shrunk, which they could have easily suffocated in. That falls under likely attempted murder. I don't remember what episode this was in, but she one time found out a red button didn't work, and just said a simple hoopsie. Sometimes the children are afraid of saying or asking something, because Ms. Frizzle might turn it into a chaotic field trip. That doesn't fall under any specific laws, but that could lead to mental health problems. So that might be another slight sprinkle of child abuse. She also has buttons for every occasion, as if she has everything planned out. No laws broken, but a bit sus. Okay, so now we're moving on to the cringer-worthy world of the magic school bus rides again. This won't really count for Miss Frizzle in herself but her sister technically took over her job without anyone knowing, which is technically identity theft, and that's ignoring the fact that she's forcing someone else to do it. Throughout the magic school bus rides again, there's encouraged animal abuse, and child endangerment, and there's also a very very cringy part which I don't even want to explain. So I'll just show if I can find the clip. This is also unrelated, but you can find people obsessing over Wanda Lee's feet in an entire cartoon foot wiki. So I just thought that was interesting. But now, how many years does Ms. Valerie Frizzle get in jail? Well, knowing that the show takes place in the Chicago suburbs, and knowing that Chicago is in Illinois, we're gonna base the amount of time she gets in jail by Illinois law. So, just as a little review, just throughout 3-6 episodes, we roughly 3 cases of child abuse, child endangerment, intended attempted harm, attempted murder, identity theft, and several cases of kidnapping. So basing all of the laws onto the show, Ms. Frizzle gets at absolute minimum 843 years in jail and 1.95 million dollars in fines at absolute most. Now, that might sound a bit far-fetched, but we've got to remember that there are roughly 10 kids in her class. And that has to count for each child. Meaning we have to multiply each time period in jail by 10. So for starters, you can get 2-5 years in jail for child endangerment with $2,500. $25,000 in fines under Illinois state law. Assuming this is a tier 3 crime. 
then we multiply 5 by 3 for 3 times of child endangerment and multiply that by 10 leaving us with 150 years in jail with $250,000 in fines already. She gets 20 years in jail for attempted murder. Multiplying that by 10 you get 200 years behind bars. For identity theft. She gets at least 3 years due to the fact that it was with only one person and wasn't a tier 4. And then for the final one. Kidnapping. I don't even remember what the amount of years was. But it was an amount to get her 450 years in jail. Since it happened on several occasions. Thinking of that as 7. That's gonna get you a huge number. She also has to pay 1.7 M million dollars in fines for that single 450 year period. Altogether, that gets her 843 years with 1.95 million in fines. She's gonna die long before that sentence is over, and she better rich to pay those fines. And we've gotta remember. These are just the highlights from 3-6 episodes. That's not even counting the other little crimes in those episodes. So altogether, she could get thousands of years in total per each crime per episode. Like what? Do we need to reopen Alcatraz for this lady? She might as well just serve a life sentence. There's also another episode where she turns the children into sea animals constantly. And that's just straight up endangering them by turning them into this monstrosity. So I've made two videos at this point proving that Ms. Frizzle's a murderer and a very dangerous person. I mean, like. She gets 843 years in jail just from a few episodes. And now, I'm not gonna go through everything again. Because I think you basically get the memo at this point. Miss Frizzle is leading closer and closer calls to the children's death so they'll trust her whenever their death really does come. She's broken many crimes along the way. And now she's gotten herself what should be a lifetime in Alcatraz. So in the last video I said that the magic school bus was getting taken off of Netflix in May. And that happened. Or so we thought. Because as I was scrolling through Netflix one night a little while ago. I saw the magic school bus. At first. I couldn't believe my eyes. But yet. There it was one season of the magic school bus that was still available for me to watch. I mean, that isn't exactly removing it but, okay. So I decided that I would watch each and every episode of season 1 to show how much of a truly awful woman the frizz is. You guys seem to like this series. So I'm back with a third installment. So episode 1 is called The Magic School Bus Gets Lost in Space. It already doesn't sound too good. So basically in this episode Arnold's cousin or something is there. And Arnold wants to prove to her how crazy his teacher is I guess. She eventually goes to space because Arnold wants to go to a quote bigger planetarium. And a little side note. How are the children not being tortured from all of the pressure going through the atmosphere? What the hell? Let me guess. It's magic. The kids act like this situation is completely normal for some reason. And wait what the crud she's literally taking the kids for a casual trip around the sun? Do you realize how dangerous that is? They should be burning to a flipping crisp. She then takes them to Mercury, 
Like that safe. No human has ever set foot on Mercury nor is it known to be very safe. They then go to Venus. Do you realize how incredibly dangerous that is? There's literal sulfuric acid on there. And Ms. Frizzle just says perfectly safe as long as we keep our space suits on. Is she trying to kill them? Well, yeah. According to my research, yes. She is trying to kill them. They then casually take a trip to Mars. Which is like, come on. They are also being forced to grab heavy ice blocks and are loading them into the ship. Once they get back inside, oh what do you know they nearly get hit by a frickin asteroid. Just an unexpected orbital interruption, Ms. Frizzle says. They are suddenly lost in space and have no idea where they are. Well that's safe. Then wait what the frick Ms. Frizzle is being sucked away into space. L Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Wait oh frick never mind. Miss Frizzle broadcasts herself on the loudspeaker and says no need to panic. I'd never leave you. Alright you creep. And now they've got to find her somewhere in space on their own. This woman is crazy. And also, what in the world? How are they controlling the ship by themselves? After checking several planets and going far into space. They finally find her on Pluto. Arnold's cousin or whatever refuses to leave or whatever and Arnold is an idiot and takes his helmet off to take his helmet off to showcase what happens. And gets frozen. Ah yes. The moment that started this entire theory. But yeah Arnold is sick after what an idiot bam the end. I don't think I even have to explain how crazy Ms. Frizzle is in this episode. It's all there. Anyway, next episode. This one's called the Magic School Bus for Lunch. It's actually pretty self-explanatory. Arnold swallows a shrunken Magic School Bus so the class can explore all of his insides. It's all dangerous and disgusting as they go through his throat and nearly get digested and stuff. They almost die. Blah blah blah. Something tells me Ms. Frizzle was intending to do this in order to potentially kill them inside and target Arnold last. But yeah this is a really dumb episode. Next one. The magic school bus inside Ralphie. What the hell? So Ralphie is sick and apparently his mom is a doctor. He has to stay home. They can't do a presentation without him. Oh. You know what that means. That's right. They take a field trip inside of Ralphie to have a quote unquote visit. They go inside Ralphie's body to show what happens whenever you're sick. I think this is an attempt to do something wrong to Ralphie. Just as a warning. And what the frick they are going inside through his scab. How does she just have a diagram of him? I think this is to know every part of his body to know his weak points. Like. She could very easily kill him from the inside. Ralphie suddenly looks horrible. Holy crud it's so dangerous to swim inside of him. Him and his mom are watching them look at his bacterial infection. Miss Frizzle probably hopes she can destroy the white blood cells and keep the bacteria in order to kill him. The bacteria is beginning to multiply faster than the white blood cells. The medicine goes inside of him. And Frizz is somehow still chill. The white blood cells attack the bacteria on the bus. Miss Frizzle just casually says. That's right Arnold. They'll try to destroy us. Ralphie is asleep. So they can't get help from him. Lol what a loser. I never sleep whenever I'm sick. Mostly because I'm incapable of napping. Anyway. 
they somehow get out of there and get into his nose to pretend to make a broadcast. He sneezes them out. And that's pretty much it. I think this is an example of how Ms. Frizzle keeps calm whenever something bad is about to happen to the children. So basically the fourth one, the magic school bus gets eaten, is just the sea animal one. They become sea animals and stuff, and a bunch of obviously dangerous and cringy things happen. I discussed it a bit at the end of my last Frizzle video. Oh and apparently they get eaten or something idk. Anyway the fifth one. The magic school bus hops home. Wanda Lee apparently has a pet frog named Bella. She's gonna do some stupid presentation on it. And for some reason it croaks Bella. Bella hops out. Miss Frizzle doesn't even have to say anything for them to know that they're going on a field trip. No wonder Arnold always wishes he stayed home. Miss Frizzle turns the bus into a frog bus. So they're small now. A cat scares them. Oh my god shut up Wanda Lee you're so irritating. The cat wants to eat them as they're hanging from a tree. Miss Frizzle does nothing. Wanda Lee finds Bella after doing some dumb things. She doesn't understand the circle of life whenever Bella goes away because she held her hostage or something. They almost get eaten by a heron. They say bye to Bella and that's really it. Nothing really much in this. But Wanda Lee did nearly drown. Episode 6 isn't too entertaining. It's just literally them going underground and doing all that normal dangerous crap. So I'll just skip that. So in episode 7, they're basically building a dessert thing and want to learn more about dessert animals. They talk about how bad the dessert is. Nothing about the frizz what the hell I don't care. Anyway I guess Frizz is taking them to the desert to show them that they're idiots. So yeah they could have been in mass danger. But this one isn't as bad as the other ones. But yeah they also go for a night and get flooded and stuff. Damn Frizz. Now. Episode 8. The magic school bus in the haunted house. This one's actually pretty stupid. The parents are sent to a haunted house with the frizz for fun on Halloween. And the children hear things wrong and freak out. They turn into these horrifying bats. Now, I really haven't been talking about the frizz too much in this video. But the thing is that I don't really have to. You can tell that all of this is her fault. And she clearly could have decided not to do something if it was too dangerous. But instead she just went with it. I also just wanna confess that I didn't actually watch a couple of these all the way through. They were too boring and I got the point. But now. Episode 9. In this one, it's Miss Frizzle's birthday. Oh. So the kids are making a surprise for Frizz. They forget the cake and are frustrated. The bus is apparently acting up and they can't go. This is actually the first time I've seen the Frizz sad. She can't murder them I guess. They wanted to go on a chemistry plant field trip. Miss Frizzle was meant to take a bakery field trip. So they go there and exhaust the bus. They shrink for some reason and go inside. They look for things they wanna eat. They wanna make one. She now suddenly has a chemistry dress on. Hum. So they make a cake whenever they're small. Hum. The bakery guy sees it and is confused. He thinks it's a moth. They're afraid of Ms. Frizzle's dangerous chemistry. So they try to do it themselves more safely. They do it successfully. 
Even if it wasn't Frizz's intention, the chef is pouring their batter in a tray, and holy flip in hell they're in the oven and getting baked. What the hell Frizz? <coughs> what are you doing? They're sweating. Miss Frizzle comes over to them outside of the bus in a uniform. She puts up a heat shield after nearly baking the children to death. You see what I mean? Closer and closer calls. They use chemistry to get out using gas pressure. They scare the shirt out of the baker. They make it out and celebrate her birthday and that's that. Ugh. Flip in hell. I hated this. Miss Frizzle was so close to murdering them it's ridiculous. Now, in episode 10, it's something about baseball. There doesn't seem to be much going on in this. And I'm saying that because sports bore me so much that I just click out anyway. But yeah it does look like some pretty messed up stuff happens in this. But I'll move on anyway. And then once again, episode 11 is a boring one too. They go to Phoebe's to find her old plant and nearly die as always. So I'm once again gonna skip this one in detail. Now, episode 12. In this one they go to a flip in Ant Hill and of course they nearly get killed. Not much to say there. It's pretty predictable. You can only imagine how dangerous that is. And finally, episode 13. I don't really like this one. I don't know why. Maybe because it's cringy as hell. It's also a classic and doesn't need much explanation. And of course, Miss Frizzle nearly kills them. So now, what did we learn today? Well, we just got more signs that Miss Frizzle really doesn't care about the children's safety. I'm practically immune to feeling shocked at this point. Because I'm not even shocked. This just shows how much of a truly rotten person she is. One last thing I was gonna put in the first video but didn't do to vagueness was the fact that the skeleton in her classroom is shown nearly moving at random times. I would say that that's a dead student that was brought back to life and is being tortured. But I highly doubt it. It's still pretty weird though. Another thing I've noticed is that at the end of the episodes people kind of treat it like it's some sort of film or a famous thing. I don't know. People constantly ask about the magic school bus, and the children still seem to be themselves. Pretty suspicious if you ask me. Maybe this whole thing is being broadcasted to the whole world? Miss Frizzle. I've made three videos on her at this point attempting to uncover the fact that she's a terrible person. And a murderer. So I've decided to make one last video on this. This time. I will be making up theories. And looking over things to draw conclusions. So at the end of my last video, I kind of hinted at a theory about how Ms. Frizzle might be setting up some huge fake thing, where everyone is in on it. It's a bit of a far-fetched theory, but there is some authenticity in it that could make sense. These people are usually calling the magic school bus at the end. So did Ms. Frizzle form this whole thing? If so. This could all line up and connect. The reason she is this way is likely because she's a witch who went insane. Not a death eater. That was a joke. But maybe she was able to use her power to possess every human on the planet to follow her live plan and attempt to murder the children. But nothing is working. Yet. If everyone is under her control. 
she can make it so they play along with her in a clever way to make these 10 specific children victims. And at this point, they could already be dead. So, how does this fit into the theory? Well, as you know, I theorized that Ms. Frizzle is making closer and closer calls to the children's death. This could be her clever tactic at manipulating them into trusting her. There's also a lot of proof that she's a witch. Such as the predictions on her dress. Her literal frickin' magic school bus. And this whole Tumblr post explaining everything. You can see that in my first video. She also could get so many years in jail. But she can't. We also proved she has done so many terrible things just across one season. It makes sense that she'd make people almost like her puppets to kill these children. But why? Why does she want to do this? Well, although we can't know for sure, we can make some theories. So I asked you guys on my community tab if you have any Ms. Frizzle theories. Most were obviously jokes, but I couldn't help but consider a couple of them. One was that she gives the children drugs. This one is less likely, but their behavior could line up. Another one is that Ms. Frizzle has schizophrenia, and is imagining this all. Now this one could work in a way, but that would completely change the theory, which wouldn't work. Another thing is that Ms. Frizzle might be the next villain of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes, Ms. Frizzle is the most powerful being alive and could totally try and take over the world by opening other dimensions or whatever. So most of the theories in here are just jokes. Like guys, we're trying to prove that Ms. Frizzle is a murderer here. We need to take this seriously. But now that we've gotten some of the theories out of the way, let's try and piece this thing together. So at the end of my last video, I basically explained that the skeleton could be a dead child that Ms. Frizzle kept alive I guess but I dismissed the theory for being too vague and out of the box. But now I'm starting to take that into consideration a bit. Like, could that be possible? Did Ms. Frizzle have another class before this? Probably not. So I guess Ms. Frizzle is just a widow with an alive skeleton. Makes sense. But now for the pet lizard. Liz. It's obviously not weird to own a lizard. I have one too. But it's just the fact that she carries it everywhere. And it's really freaking smart. I don't know why it'd be that way. But it might be Miss Frizzle's magic or something. So I don't think that part's very important. And I think I'd finally have a firm grasp on what's going on here. If it weren't for Arnold. Arnold frickin' Pearlstein. Now I wasn't too interested in the Arnold part of the story, because I felt that wasn't really that important. But I then started to think, why is there so much emphasis on Arnold? I mean, he's practically the main character. I generally think that he's being tortured and is Miss Frizzle's main target for some reason. But taking things into consideration, I made up another theory that's probably a bit far-fetched. But here it is. Ms. Frizzle looks sort of like Arnold. So, Arnold's a murderer too. That's right. I don't know why, but I feel like they're related in some sort of way. The reason there's so much emphasis on him is because he's important. He's one of the masterminds behind this horrible thing. Now obviously, this probably isn't true. But I couldn't help but think it. So I think I'm going with her targeting Arnold for some reason. Maybe he'll be the first one to go. 
But with that being said, let's review. Miss Frizzle is a magical being who wants to murder nine children for one reason or another, and is trying to manipulate them through making closer and closer calls. To the point where the children will trust her whenever their death really does come. They were likely brainwashed. Due to how idiotic they are. She uses a magic school bus for this master plan. And would get thousands of years in prison. But she warped everyone's mind to follow her every command. The kids just think they're famous for some reason. Even though the people just want more info. Heck. This is probably being broadcasted to the world or something. And this is all to get those kids slayed. But for extra measure. Miss Frizzle made her sister take over from suspicious activity. Maybe the whole thing went wrong. And everyone betrayed her. So she's leaving Fiona Frizzle to do the killing. While the parents think that their kids are going to normal school. And Miss Frizzle is on the run. So what do I think of all this? Well. There's a lot of proof for it. Such as her starving them. Several instances where she actually could have killed them. And so many things that I can't even remember. The proof's all right there. So guys. I think we've done it. We have officially proved that Ms. Valerie Frizzle is a heartless murderer. Thank you for joining me on my investigations. If you have any more things to add, please write them in the comments. Even through the span of half the series, there's enough proof that Ms. Frizzle is in fact a murderer. I hope I ruined your childhood, and goodbye.